Now, out of all the units that we've purchased, we want to get the total that it cost us. So we'll say total unit cost. And once again, we just take the box, we feed it our data, and we fire off our maps. We know our typing's already, so all that's good. So we first we want units, so we'll do x dot filter. This will be somewhat similar. Y I data parse int y dot units as string is greater than zero. And then we need to get rid of the free items because um, it doesn't cost us anything. And then we'll keep the, we'll take the returns out and keep them separate. Um, because it's not like they're, I mean, they do affect the cost, but we'll just leave them out. We'll keep it simple. Um, we'll get fancy here in a little while with some more videos. Okay, so as an extra filter, y i data. Y dot free is not equal to one dot map x i data x dot filter y i data y dot return item is not equal to one. Let's fold it. And then we'll call log it out to the console. Oh, we'll give this a data array. I uh, data, because that's what it technically is. Oops. Oh, so we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so five items. Now what we need to do <coughs> is We're saying give me everything that had units, but some of these have cases as well. So that's a part of our cost for these items. Um, but we could also just say we just want to have <clears throat> the cost of the units. We'll get the cost of the cases separately. Let's do that. So let's be really similar to the previous one. Um, and then in the next video, we'll get to see... A third option here besides filter and reduce will actually get to use a map. But for now, we'll just stop map this. Whoa. We're going to use reduce again, accumulator and a current. I'm going to put my comma zero in there, and it's accumulator <coughs> plus. We are going to say parse int current dot units, and we'll do our ask string again, times parse float current dot cost as string, and I think we're going to see... Cost is 93.8, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> we don't want all these decimal places. That's not really great. So we know this is a number because we parsed int and we parsed float. There we can just do a map. Keep it tidy. And it's a dollar value, so let's just put a back tick. Two question marks, curly brace, x dot two fixed, two, not three. Cost, we can go with three for cost. Why not? Let's see the difference. Yeah. 93.80. Perfect. Perfect. Now, if we wanted to start putting these on the screen, what we could do 
We'll just throw this as a little bonus part right here. We're going to open up our files and go to our webpack common. And on output, we're going to say the public path. Whoops, I just want a slash. I'm sorry. And then underneath this new uh, HTML webpack plugin, we're going to say the template. index.html. So we'll create that public folder. And inside the public folder, we'll create an index.html. And I'm going to use Emmer. Type, uh, excuse me, HTML5 colon, or HTML colon 5, and then hit tab. And we can say the title is playing with TypeScript. And monads. And we'll come up here and we'll give this a div. We'll say div and then we'll put a span. And then we'll give our span an ID. That's unit cost. Well, that's, uh, what was it, total units? And then we'll just break that span out. And create another span. ID equals a uh, unit cost, and then in our index.js, we can say document get element by ID. That's unit. We make that. Let's make it. To, let's make a match. Total units. Okay. Total units. And TypeScript's not happy, um, so what we'll do is we'll just take and put an exclamation point right there. And we'll do the same thing for this one. That's going to be total unit cost. We'll just copy that, put that into our index. We'll say total unit cost. And now uh, total unit cost and total units. Let me check that real quick. ID. ID, let's see if it's this one or the other one. Not happy with this one. That all goes away. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not going to work because... <laughs> oh, Webpack has no idea that we made a change to it. So, let's kill Webpack. Uh, and then we'll just fire it back up, npm start. Yeah, you know, it's going to create a new tab, so let's kill these other tabs. So there's our total unit cost, and then there's our total units. Oh, it's not going to let me break it. Oh, that's fine. I was still going to say anything. All right. Inspect that. And yeah, everything is in order. So in the next video, we're going to get a little bit more complicated. We're going to look at some tracing tools so that we can see what's going on in the middle of all this. 
Um, but once you get the hang of it, it's really pretty straightforward. You don't really even have to think about what's happening here anymore. So we'll stop this video here, and then we'll come back on the next video and get into some debugging and stuff like that.